What happens when troubleshooting goes wrong? When it just goes completely array and you are stuck? You are beyond words at some point. What happens? Because this just happened to me and it's so completely frustrating. Now, please keep in mind, I've been in this field for a long time. I've been troubleshooting computers since some of you have been in the womb, which yeah, that can be a very long time when you think about it, right? Like some of you guys I know are in your teenage years, uh, just looking to get into this field. Maybe you're in your early 20s. I've been screwing with computers the majority of my life, and I'm pretty old at this point, and I've run across everything, it seems like. And that is something that you gain as you are getting into this field. You're going to experience many things. And one thing that I can tell you for sure is you will experience things that you've never seen before. And maybe you've experienced it a long time ago, you forgot about it, and you come back to it and, and troubleshooting it again or in a different aspect, and you're just completely lost, right? One thing for sure is you can expect the unexpected, especially when it comes to technology. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. I'm going to give you a bit of feedback because maybe in the past couple videos that you've seen, you've seen this luxurious beast just sitting here wide open and why because this was my main rig this was the my daily driver like this was everything i put a lot of money into this thing to be completely honest with you i just built it about two years ago it has the amd ryzen 2700 uh processor in it we have 32 gigs of corsair ram uh, i had the asus 6 gig video card was a 1060 uh this thing was a beast i mean it really was just an absolute beast i had a video out on this thing um you guys will see a couple you know uh the b-roll videos uh, uh spliced in here but it died. It died. It was so depressing. This happened a couple weeks ago. And what had happened was I had moved my office here, downstairs in the basement of my house. My office previously was out in my garage, if you didn't know that. And it's just absurdly cold right now. And today it snowed like four inches. So yeah, anyway, it's a good idea that I'm back in the house. So anyway, I bring this thing back downstairs here. I plug it in, make sure everything's right, turn it on. We're good. Logs in, just fine. Not five minutes later, it shuts off. So, oh, all right, well, maybe I missed something. Maybe it did like an update, I don't know. Just Windows is goofy, we already know this. So no problem, turn it back on. And it gets to the Windows loading screen and it shuts off. I'm like, hmm, that's odd, right? Now, there are definitely a few things that came to mind right away when this issue happened. Now, initially, the first thing that I thought of, well, maybe it's something to do with Windows. Maybe it's something, um, you know, they had maybe downloaded recently. Maybe I did get infected with something. Maybe, you know, something is just screwy within the operating system itself. Because if you know anything about Windows, you know that it gets pretty funky sometimes. And it had been about a year or more since I have actually done a complete refresh. And I am a huge advocate of refreshing your system every year. At least once a year. Definitely just do a complete refresh. And we're going to talk in future videos about cloning your hard drives, you know, setting up a perfect image so you can uh, go through these processes a little bit easier. And that's something that I never do because I love doing fresh installs and just reinstalling everything. In my infinite wisdom, I downloaded a Windows 10 ISO. I put it on a, a, a thumb drive, plugged it in, booted, right? Booted right to the, to the installation screen. No problems. It didn't shut off. I actually got through the installation process for Windows without any issue. Now, I should say that it did take a while to actually get the thumb drive loaded correctly um, because I was using my Mac and had a few issues there, but what, besides the point, right? It worked. I was able to install Windows until it rebooted. It rebooted, and then guess what? Windows loading screen, shut off. It's okay. Next troubleshooting step. It's either going to be, you know, the, the power supply, which I could pull out a power supply right here. This isn't the exact one because I put the uh, power supply that was in here in another machine to verify that it was uh, working after the fact, right? So, fine. Could be a power supply. It was an 850 watt power supply, uh, 850 watt Corsair power supply. Um, gold rated, right? So, premium power supply, if you will. 
Now, I know this machine wasn't drawing that much power. It was just impossible to draw that much power with what I had going on uh, with inside of it. You know, there's only like two hard drives in there, two solid state drives, and the video card. Should be no problem. So after it shuts off again, I start going to the next troubleshooting steps. You know, what, what could possibly, what else could possibly be the issue? So I start unplugging things, right? I start reseeding the RAM, taking the RAM out, checking each stick one by one, checking each hard drive one by one. And then I got to a point where, you know, I took the video card out, I had used onboard video, still the same thing, it would just shut down. So, you know, after unplugging everything in, plugging it all back in, I tried a different hard drive even, and uh, still, it was the same thing. I reinstalled Windows on this new hard drive, nothing, it's just still kept shutting down. Now, you know, initially it's, you know, I have in the back of my head, well, it could be a power issue, but I don't want to believe that. I don't want to think that. I never, I hate thinking that it's a power issue, especially when it actually turns on, but, you know, shutting off, it's, you, you, your mind goes many different ways after you've been troubleshooting computers for a long time because really anything could happen. So anyway, I'm sitting here dumbfounded. I had already spent four hours with this thing going through all the different troubleshooting processes that I could possibly think of. And I'm sitting there in the BIOS and I'm just letting it idle. I'm just, you know, frustrated at this point because I've tried just about everything that I could think of. And I'm sitting there looking at the BIOS screen, just, you know, PO'd really. And I noticed the temps, that the, the CPU temperature just keeps going up and up and up. And I'm thinking, well, why is the CPU temps going up? It's just sitting idle in the BIOS. There's really no uh, you know, pressure being put on the CPU at this point. There's nothing happening, it's just sitting idle. And the temps were getting quite high. I mean, it was going up to about 100 degrees. And I mean, I, using a liquid cooler, there's, there's no reason that it should be doing this. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe my, my cooler's bad. Right? I have this nice Corsair cooler. Maybe it's bad. Maybe something happened with it. Who knows, right? So I knew that it was really between a power issue and now this cooler issue. So I ordered new ones. I ordered a new cooler. I ordered a new power supply. And they came in. I put the new power supply in first because, you know, that's quite honestly the easiest thing to replace. So fine, not, not a big deal. Replace the power supply, put the power supply in, turn the computer on, and guess what happens? This, this, something I've never experienced before. This totally caught me by surprise because here, I bought a brand new, almost identical power supply to what I had in there. Turn it on and my computer starts sizzling. Yeah, sizzling. Like, you literally hear it sizzling. Like, I wish I would have recorded this because it's just mind-blowing to me. It's sizzling. You just hear electrical components, you know, doing that sizzling noise. Maybe I'll put in that audio in this video. And I look over at it even further and no fans are spinning and you just hear this crackling, sizzling sound and I immediately unplug this thing. And you could smell the electric uh, burning. If you ever smell electric fire, right? Anything that's burning with electrical components, it's a smell that you will never forget for the rest of your life. It's one of the most disturbing smells you could possibly imagine because it's just not right. It's just such a weird, weird smell. And it was that point where I knew there was nothing more that could be done. That this... My glorious beast of a machine where I did all of my video editing, all of my gaming, daily driving was dead. It died. Because at that point, at the point when you hear sizzling within electronic components, done. Dead in the water as far as I'm concerned. I'll never touch it again. Well, I mean, you know, I'll never use it again because at this point I don't know what the issue was. The fact that I heard sizzling, yeah, no bueno, dudes. No bueno at all. So the point of this video really is, as you're going through this field, as you are learning things on a day-to-day -day basis, and you learn how to troubleshoot different things, and you pick up on things throughout the years, you can do everything that you could possibly think of to fix the issue, and ultimately, sometimes you, you can't, because... 
technology sucks sometimes. But the, the, the other point, I guess, of this video is, you know, I, I, I want to encourage you guys to troubleshoot uh, to the best of your ability, to go above and beyond and, and trying to figure out exactly what's going on with a computer. And I, I guess I'm saying that, and I could have done more to try to figure out what exactly uh, the issue was here, but... I mean, honestly, once I once you hear sizzling, like you don't want to you don't want to screw with that anymore. I don't want to plug this thing back in and have it catch fire in my house. I have four kids here. That sounds like a terrible idea for something to catch fire, and then who knows what happens, right? So ultimately, you know, when you're experienced these things through the years, you'll you'll remember the different things that you've done. You'll remember um, how you had troubleshoot something. You know, going from not from when you first started to uh, where you're at currently, right? So the ultimate point of this video is really, these are things that you pick up on through years of being in the field, right? Troubleshooting and experiencing different things like this that I've experienced before, except for the sizzling part. I've never experienced that before. But just experiencing, you know, a power supply going bad or a, a, a cooler going bad, for instance. You know, it, it, these aren't things that you are just going to know and, and learn right off the bat these are things that you experience like that's where you know everybody's like so gung-ho and so uh, caught up on experience well there's a great reason for that because when you are troubleshooting especially computers specifically like you're never going to experience the same thing or you're never going to experience every single possibility of an issue that could go wrong right off the bat within the first month six months year two years three years even it takes time to actually see different issues arise and i want to encourage you guys to keep moving forward and you don't need to know everything because ultimately it's time that helps teach you the things that you need to know and i want to go back to some of the roots like the very like root the first root that essentially started this channel and producing some more basic tutorial types of videos and I wish I would have recorded the process that I went through with this and I'm really frustrated that I didn't but what you guys should know right now is I'm ordering new parts I'm going to be building a brand new computer we are going to create an entire video of that process and talk about you know, the steps that we're doing, the different components and things like that, because some of you out there have never built a computer before, and I assure you it's a lot easier than you think it is. You should never be intimidated by it. It's not that bad of a process at all. So we'll go through that. And I want to talk about ISOs and Windows 10 and putting that on a thumb drive and, you know, plugging it in your computer and installing Windows from a thumb drive. Uh, really just things that I think everybody should kind of know as they're getting into this field, especially when you're getting more into the IT technical side of the field. These are just essentials, right? So we'll go back to the roots. We're talking about Windows 10. We'll talk about, you know, optimum setups within the Windows 10 operating system. We'll talk about device manager. Uh, we'll talk about event viewer. We're just going to cover many different things. So that's all I got for this video. It's a little bit random. It's a little bit off, uh, off the charts, I guess. It's just kind of out there, right? So... Uh, that's all I got for today's video. Uh, stay tuned for, for more. As always, take it easy.